Okay, so while I've been working on some stuff for other channels that I contribute to, trying to get the one going, um, which will not be a post every day on dangerous criminals from all over the world, from every time frame, not necessarily serial killers, just dangerous people in general. Um, I have the Facebook page set up. I don't know how set up it is yet, but it's there. I'll be working on the YouTube probably this weekend when I've got time. Um, I haven't really been updating up here much. There's been just so much going on. There was a threatened shooting Monday at my daughter's school. And it was over a bunch of shit, honestly. Um, one of the Gay Alliance support groups got permission to hang a gay flag. And it started from there. Now you have to understand, we live in a rural area very redneck school well the threats have been continuing even up till today and the school's not really doing anything about it and I was contacted by a reporter to speak about it on TV because my daughter has actually been physically assaulted and she won't fight back simply because if she gets suspended she's out of band for good and she's worked so hard she doesn't want to let anybody ruin that. So she's, you know, she's going against her natural instincts and I guess in a way doing the right thing. I would prefer her just to shove their teeth down her throat, but um, I get why. Uh, this is important to her and it should be and I want her to have a better life than, than me. So, you know, I respect her wanting to go ahead and keep doing her thing. Um, I did go to the school and had some words, not some very nice words, but I had some words for the principal. They tried to tell me the shooting incident was a completely different thing, but they were looking into all this stuff that they had seen that kids had pulled off Snapchat and had showed him. And I told them, I feel very unsafe with my daughter at that school. And they kept assuring me she was safe. I still don't feel like she's safe at that school. Um, some of the things I did agree with them on, but these kids... If you have kids that go to Carter and they're telling you that their Christian rights are being taken, I can show you exactly what they're mad about and what they're saying in return. And for one, it has nothing to do with religion. And if they're part of a religious group, maybe that group needs to take a look at the, you know, inside their own group at those kids and get them set straight. Because a real Christian would never talk to these kids the way or about the teachers that help with the group the way that these people do. And all I've seen is homophobic wording, homophobic statements, threats, and stuff about racial flag or racial flags, I'm sorry, Confederate flags, which I don't have an issue with the Confederate flag. I live in the South. I'm a Southern woman. I have a Confederate flag tattooed on me. I have a gay pride flag tattooed on me, and I will probably likely have a Romani gypsy will tattooed on me as well, or the flag. But it's ridiculous. And I really don't think that the school's taking it that serious because they said the shooting thing was more of just a rumor. Um,. Of course, they can't tell you much of anything now because of confidentiality we're used to. They could tell you everything about the kid. You could be sitting there with the kid and the parents in the room. But uh, it was just... And I was sitting there listening to them when I was alone in the office for a minute and listening to them take calls. And they were obviously getting asked questions about the voicemail that went out, about the anonymous tip that was received in the middle of the night about the threatened shooting. They were lying to parents left and right saying that everything was under control. These students are getting harassed up until bedtime. It isn't under control. It's far from under control. Um, but they don't want to hear it. If it was any other group of kids, it'd be dealt with. He did show me one rebel flag that he took from a kid. That's not my problem. I don't give a shit if they have a rebel flag. I don't. What I give a shit about is the harassment, the bullying, and putting their hands on people. And, the, and, you know, the principal, well, some kids, you know, get, you know, say they get, we get told some kids say that they seen something or got told something and we get them in here and they say no. Hello? 
some kids aren't going to admit to it because if they get found out, do you know what would happen? Like, really? These kids nowadays, where I used to only hear snitch from felons, they use it in school, you know, and they will physically attack somebody over something like that. So, some of it, yeah, I'm sure is just a rumor. Some of it is just fake. But I've seen too much of it with my own two eyes to know that it's 100% fake. I was told that the three that started the rumors had been dealt with. That's all they'll tell me. But I do know that last night my daughter was still getting messages that said, and excuse me, this is not how I usually talk, but they said, fuck you, I hate faggots. And stuff like that. And of course me being me. I'm really quick witted. And you know. I probably shouldn't have. But I told her what to say back. To the point that the kid got irritated. And blocked her. And I'm like. Maybe this is a way to get them to stop. You know. And Caitlin was telling me. That there's already a kid that's suicidal. Because of all this stuff's going on. And this is the type of thing. That kid, that schools don't get. This is why kids kill themselves. This is why kids get suicidal. Something like this breaks out in a mass thing and affects a group of students. These group of students feel like they're unheard, they're uncared for, they're not wanted there, they don't fit in, that you have to basically be a rich, white, straight-A student or involved in sports before they give a shit about you. That's how they feel. They did get told, the principal promised me and my daughter that they would not lose their support group. Um, he showed me one rebel flag they took, which I don't really give a shit. But what pisses me off is these little shitheads are going to their parents and claiming that their religion is being attacked at school. Nothing is being attacked about their religion at school. Christianity is not under fire at that school. That is one of the... the the school loans its auditoriums out for church on Sundays. They're not under attack. And I don't know when the rebel flag became part of being a Christian. Because that's all I see them bitching about. About how much they hate faggots. How much they hate gays. And then how they want to wear their flag. But they're telling their parents it's their Christianity that's being oppressed. I know what the Christian flag looks like. I know what the flag looks like that was carried into the Crusades. I'm not stupid. The principal's not stupid. You know, and I, he didn't realize that this is what these certain kids are going home and telling their parents. It's unfounded and it's untrue. And these parents, if they're any kind of parent, would be monitoring their child on social media to see exactly what it is they're saying to these other kids. If your kid goes to Carter and they are stating, my Christian beliefs are being suppressed or anything to that nature and they are on any kind of social media, I challenge you to get into their social media accounts and see what you can see. And you tell me how much their Christianity is being oppressed. They still have their group. It's not going anywhere. The other students' groups are not going anywhere. So these so-called Christians need to learn how to do exactly like Jesus did. Accept the sinners into their group. Show them how it is they're supposed to live. Be Christ-like. Quit letting, you know, let go of the, of the church. And I know that sounds horrible for me, but God didn't even like the temples. This is coming from somebody who's not, who is not Christian. Just ask him. And if you think that it's stupid they can't have the rebel flag, well, let me tell you a little bit of something here. I went to Carter since middle school. Okay. My 20th year reunion would be, let's see, I'm trying to think, 15, uh, yeah, my 20th year should be coming up this year. This year, next year, something like that. Next year. It should be next year. Yeah. My 20th anniversary is next year. So, I went to Carter 6th grade through 12th. The rebel flag was banned either my 6th or my 7th grade year. 
middle school and high school, and I'm, I'm assuming elementary school, and they ended up banning Malcolm X Wear because it was causing a huge racial divide in the school. Then in high school, we had a boy that was almost killed in the hallways. He was jumped by three other students, and they nearly killed him over something stupid. A paper wad. He was a country boy, like most of the boys up there are. He threw a paper wad at a friend of his, and he missed and accidentally hit another kid. He apologized. That kid, his brother, and another kid jumped him. And the kid was gone for almost a full year from school. That's how bad they hurt this kid. Okay, and it went on a long time, obviously, before they could get it broke up. And I've seen the officer that sets at Carter. He's not going to break up any kind of fight like that. I promise you that. And the teachers aren't supposed to touch him. So it worries me, you know. And to know that if my daughter gets pushed enough and she fights back physically, then she's going to be punished too. It's stupid. So if you live in my area, I really urge you to call your school board. Or call the school, the call the one that's over Carter. Let them know what's going on and your thoughts on it. It's ridiculous. Even if you don't agree with what the students are doing, hopefully, as a parent, you can agree that the bullying and the threats and the harassment has got to stop. You've got young men, supposedly young men, threatening little girls, women, teenagers. It's ridiculous. You know, it's getting to the point that, you know, parents are saying, if this man, basically, lands a finger on my daughter, I'll go to jail for putting hands on a underage student. Because they can't fight back at school. I mean, they can, but then they lose a lot. And that's really unfair, especially to the straight-A student who's there every single day unless something happens. And then she makes up every bit of her work. And I'm not just talking about my daughter. There's other kids, too. She doesn't want to be kicked out of band today, tomorrow, forever. She likes music. She enjoys getting to do that. And I'm serious. When she comes home, if she can get that TV, we watch marching bands for a few hours. We watch Carter, and then we'll watch a bunch more, and then we'll go back to Carter. And what she's doing is she's just watching different marching bands, kind of getting an idea of how different bands function. Um, and then she goes back to watch herself to see how bad she's doing or how good she's doing, if there's anything she needs to work on foot-wise. She can see that from the video. So that's how dedicated this kid is, because you have to understand. She is insanely busy through the week with band period right now so that is her stance on it and why you know she's just putting up with it at this moment um i don't feel safe sending her there but she says i mean she says she doesn't feel safe but she's like i can't miss if they're not going to take care of this hopefully it doesn't take something too awful bad to get them to realize just how bad it really is and that's what I hope for too kids if your parents are telling you to say these sort of things please break the cycle do your own research get out there and talk to people it's not necessarily going against how you were raised as much as it is as progressing with the rest of the country there's nothing wrong with that and our state is way behind on the times compared to some other places and you know we're probably always going to be looked at like that until you know some of these kids that have these very militant type parents that are very close-minded these kids stop stop doing you know having the same thought process and thinking for themselves instead of listening to everything that their parents say about something that they honestly probably never know anything about. I find out some of the most homophobic people that I've ever met have never met anybody other than straight people. Or that they know of. So, hug your kids. Tell them you love them. 
And please stop teaching them to hate other kids. Even if it's by assumption. These little girls get called whores for nothing. Literally nothing. You know, when the boys can do what they want to do and it's cool. You know, it's been a double standard for years. I've never fucking understood it. Ever. If you can go out and do what you do all the time, then don't call a woman a name for doing the same thing. Just bullshit. On happier news, I have an 8x10 to use so I can finally, hopefully, pin down a date to get the tattoo of my grandmother on the back of my hand and hopefully work out to get the tattoo of my grandfather on the back of my other hand. Um, I want to put a victory wreath of flowers around them, but I have this stupid little tattoo right there that I've had forever, so hopefully I can get that covered. Um, uh, it's going to take a lot because my hands are small. And what really sucks, too, let's see if I can show you guys without covering the camera. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I have, yeah, you can see it. I've got scarring on the back of that hand right there. Like, right, you see that where that dent in between there? That's a scar because I punched through a window. I've got them up my arm, too. Um, I'm hoping that that can be hid in the portrait. There's a picture in particular that I want, but I don't know if anybody found it because I know if Granny could have gotten her hands on it, she may have burned it. Because <laughs> I always loved this picture of her. She always used to keep it hanging up. She had the big beehive hair, and she was young, and she had the horn, you know, the cat eye glasses. And I loved that picture of her, and she always hated it. And that's the one I want to use. But I'll take what I can get. So far, the 8x10s that I'm looking at using are of her and probably the last uh, 10 years of her life or so she was a very active member of her church up until her health kept her from going so i'm assuming that probably one of the pictures that i've been looking at is from the church directory or was made for the church directory but she got some eight by tens and stuff to pass out to the family um I'm excited about that. I'm just waiting on the artist to get back in touch with me so we can set something up and give me a roundabout price. But I also do need to get the photo and kind of show them because they were wanting something professional in 8x10 to look at. And, well, I pulled something out of my ass and got access to one. So um, I'm excited about that. That was like... As soon as I calmed down after she was gone, that was like the first thing that came to my mind. I know my grandmother hated tattoos, but she didn't still mind them as long as they were pretty. And in my eyes, she was beautiful. So, that's how I want to remember her, and that's how I want to honor her. I know she's with me now, and she knows I love her more than anything. Anyway, thanks for listening to me rant, guys. Love you.